Right, I'm going to do a video here about um, how I made this R2D2. This one, unlike a lot of them, isn't actually um, resin parts or anything like that that you can buy off of eBay or various club websites and stuff. This one, um, I decided to make the whole thing from scratch. Probably on hindsight, should have just um, bought some of the stuff when I considered a waste of probably a thousand hours or so. It's done now, so. Um, right, if we start at the top here, um, unlike a lot of the ones as well you'll see, or most of them, uh, they have a resin head or some sort of um, GRP type head. However, I wanted a real steel one. So I've got this stainless steel one which is really tricky to cut. You can see I've got a little bit, a couple of little bits there to finish. Um, as you can imagine, stainless steel is really hard, a bit of a bugger to cut really. Um, but you can get some car tungsten carbide hole saws and cutters for here, um, which you can get off eBay for about maybe 10 15 quid for a small set of them from China or somewhere and then once you've done that I've masked and spray you can see it's pretty good finish um, masking you've got to be you've got to make a special um, template cutter really uh, basically a long stick with a razor blade on it so you can cut circular pieces of tape because you've got um, an angle going this way and that way you'll need to be able to wrap it down if you try to put straight tape on there you can't really bend the tent tape round without getting a kink in it it is pretty easy and um, I've got a blog spot, maybe Google um, Autonomous R2D2 where I explain about that and bodywork and so on and so forth. Um, got the projectors round here. I believe the original ones for R2D2 were actually um, the air vents out of um, a, an aeroplane or something. You know the cooling vents you probably remember back in the 70s, 80s or something. I think they've mainly gone now but that kind of thing. Um, however I've made these ones out of Aussie um, I think it was called Aussie Conditioner or something like that. And these bits here, the top of bleach bottles, and I got a pair of kids' binoculars and cut them all out for lenses. So I managed to track down three of those from a car boot sale for about 50p. This one at the front here is slightly different because it's actually uh, motorised. There's a servo on the back of there so you can actually move it in various orientations. And inside that are four high power LEDs. Can't really see them, of course, because of the brightness, but. Um, I won't point straight down it. They're out of um, equivalent ones to like an Audi headlights, that kind of thing. Got a webcam up behind here. This is a colour changing globe, um, although for some reason it doesn't appear to be changing colour much. Oh, here we go. Um, you could buy those from, I don't know, a pound shop or something, as they're like balls that are just um, opaque and just change colour. Here we've got the, the matrix. I haven't really done too much work on this, it's a pretty basic matrix, but it consists of um, various flashing coloured LEDs molded into here. I need, I'm going to rechange all this section here because it was a bit naff. I wanted a square grill type of effect but I couldn't find one so I had to make one up. And uh, likewise around the back there. By the way this thing on the top here I've made loose because eventually that's going to pop up with some gadgets and things but not at the moment. And then the bowl, the top bowl here I got from the actual head itself I got from Ikea. It's called Blander Bank, Blank I think. And that ends there and then we've got um, a Lazy Susan type bearing under here which I've got a strip of aluminium and just glued round and then there's a piece of MDF on top and the head separates at this joint here but the whole head itself I can rotate it rotates around that axis there you can hear it gaunching a little bit there's a stepper motor inside because obviously it's laptop or computer controlled it needs to know its position at any time right the, um, the body is made of MDF um, it probably looks better in real life actually than it does on the video, it looks a bit dull but it's very very smooth and um, I've steamed around, most people will say you can't steam MDF but as of anything in life you can do most things if you think about it um, and get likewise here it's MDF and it's basically coated in a thick primer stroke resin type stuff, you can either put loads of coats of primer on it, best thing is actually to cover it in like a household gloss first believe it or not and then rub it back slightly and then give it normal car paint finishes if you can't be bothered to gel coat it or whatever and it does come out you can see these here it's pretty smooth and pretty shiny so you can get a good finish on it the legs here um, likewise they're pretty much the same they're actually made of oak though instead had a piece of kitchen worktop I stand back a bit they're actually routed out of a solid old oak worktop when I was doing the kitchen and um, I need to finish this section here of course and then these are made on the lathe solid aluminium likewise there and there Pretty straightforward and then again another bits of oak down here another bit of lathe work on this control rod thing 
and then in here these are just routed grooves with Dremel and what you do is glue aluminium foil in there and then just distress it slightly again aluminium plate there and then this here is a bit more oak and here it's just got a moulded piece of um, fiberglass and filler this is quite handy this is actually MDF and what I did was glued foil on there and then sanded it all back down to um, give it a proper aluminium worn look rather than a glossy and then down here the feet are essentially an MDF frame and uh, here we've got cardboard and I actually cover the cardboard then in just resin or super glue actually some of the bits and it just sets it hard like proper plastic and makes it really light and then down here these things here can be really tricky to find because I couldn't find copper braiding anywhere and um, then I noticed somewhere that the inside an old computer that um, Belkin do IDE leads for um, it's like pimping up your computer or something. Anyway, if you look in there, you can buy these for about two quid, and they have a big thick plastic cover, a clear plastic sleeve over, and just chuck that away and use that. And these are old aerial sockets I've just cut down the Dremel, so you can actually unscrew them. Look. There you go. Just to get those off, which is actually a dead handy way. I need to distress all this because the feet are all they're brand new. If you look at the uh, the rest of the body, which has been painted properly. Um, buttons here. Just uh, made one of them, and then what I did was covered it in um, like grease or wax or something, and then I s basically squirted normal sanitary silicon sealant over it to make a silicon mold, which is actually a cheap way of making a mold if you make sure it doesn't stick to it. And then I just filled them up with normal car filler to cast six of them, so they're all exactly the same. Around here, this is um, these vents at the front. This, this housing here is made of um, wood sprayed with a steel finish and then the internal parts here are a solid aluminium plate or sheet and then this is real rust on here and what I do is spray glue on it or the areas I want and then blow some old cast iron rust from the garden, dry it and blow it onto it and it sticks to tree but I'll show you that in another video and likewise around here as well this is made of MDF and just spun up on the lathe, gouged out I say these things just, but these things parts take hours and hours. It's probably half a day's work there, as you can imagine. Um, likewise for these things, these are really tricky to make. Um, and then we head off around this side. We've got these steel plates here, or aluminium plates rather. And again, they're just cut with the Dremel. And uh, again, there's another piece there. Underneath here, we've got his skirt and so on there. On this particular one, We've got a USB port here, and we're going to have power connections in there. At the moment, it's just for debugging purposes because it's autonomous. It's a real nuisance having to strip it apart to get it in every five minutes. And then down here, we've got a small on-off switch and uh, an auxiliary power unit there for testing servo control and things like that without having to necessarily use the heavier current required for the motors and things, which are down in there. And the motors are... I'll go around this side... The motors themselves are out of electric door wipers, uh, sorry, window wiper, uh, window winders for, um, I think these are Peugeot 306 or something. And again, around the back here, it's all pretty much the same. And that's it. One R2D2.